Okay, let's talk about vectors. And uh, hopefully some of you have heard this uh, word before. Actually, if you just, you know, when you're watching different movies and whatnot, I actually hear this word quite frequently, it's, uh, especially when you hear uh, like air traffic controllers talking to airplanes or whatnot. Just pay attention. You'll hear this word <laughs> all, all, all over the place. Of course, me being a math guy, I pick up on different math terminologies all the time. But you'll hear things like, oh, vector in this direction or et cetera. So you may be familiar with this word. I'm pretty sure you probably heard it somewhere, okay? But uh, vectors are extremely important in mathematics and in science, and they uh, solve tons of practical problems. I'm going to uh, uh, basically give you a super basic introduction to vectors. So if you were ever curious about, hey, what is a vector? What does this mean? Okay, I've heard this word. Uh, and this guy's going to explain the basics of it. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this uh, vectors here, um, you know, is used in all type of applications again. And it could, you know, we get into pretty serious math when we're studying more advanced vectors, but we can easily understand the essence of it uh, by just showing you a couple quick examples and explaining some basic terminology. So I'm going to get into this in just one second. So if you were ever curious about vectors, you're going to learn a little bit about them here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. And in my pre-calculus course, I actually teach vectors, of course, at a much more advanced level. But um, but again, uh, whether you know the mathematics, we can you know any topic you can get any topic you can get into you know uh, more in depth look of it. So in my pre calculus course, we really get heavy duty into vectors, but um, we don't need to go into all that advanced math just to have you get a basic sense of what they are. So, but anyway, so um, I also have uh, many many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, High Set Task, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT. Accuplates or uh, a CLEP exam, Alex exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. Well, I can help you out. I got um, great comprehensive uh, math test prep courses. So just go to my uh, website, check out my full course catalog. If I do not have what you're studying for, drop me a line and I'll help you the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously, it helps those of you that are just struggling in math. Now, if you are serious about wanting to learn math, okay, or improve in math, you know, then you got to do this. Now, if you uh, are not, you know, if you're not serious, then just disregard this. But if you truly are serious and committed, well, you got to do this, and that is, you got to take great notes every single day. All right, if you do this, okay, over decades of of uh, teaching math, I've just seen. All right, it just there's like this golden rule out there. These students always do very, very well. Not surprisingly so, because they're not missing anything. They got great notes to study from, and then the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone, talk to their buddies, do their homework in their math class for their other class. Listen, all the things that I used to do, except for the cell phone part, because I went to school way back in the good old 1980s, but believe me, we were quite distracted. We didn't need, uh, need any cell phones. Um, of course, cell phones are awesome, but they are super distracting, so you got to put that thing away while you're trying to take notes, okay? But if you take great notes, believe me, you're going to do very, very well. Now, in the meantime, as you're improving in your note-taking, um, I offer great detailed comprehensive math notes so you can study from uh, the material that you may have missed. So those uh, notes would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so, what is this little thing right here? I'm talking about vectors, and I got this little guy right here. Well, this little arrow is a representation of a vector. All right, so, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, let's get to it now. Let's talk about this arrow, but before we do so, let me give you some basic terminology. So we have things called scalar quantities, and I'm gonna talk about this in just one second, and then we have these other guys over here called vectors, and this is what we wanna know about. But in order to really understand vectors, 
I got to understand scalar qualities. Okay, so what is this uh, scalar qualities? Well, best way to describe scalar qualities is just to give you an example. So maybe like 20 pounds. Okay, is this a scalar quality? Uh, let's see here, 70 miles per hour. So a scalar quantity is just a uh, number. It just has one unit of, of, of measure. Okay, that's basically uh, a scalar quantity. No, you're like, all right, that's, you know, I, I see these uh, type of uh, numbers with units of measure all the time. Well, that's called scalar. All right, what's the difference between that and a vector? Well, again, vectors we uh, represent by little arrows, okay, like this, all right? And vectors have uh, a scalar component to them, something like this, but they have something else that make, uh, makes them um, a vector, and that is direction. So vectors have both scalar and direction, all right? So they're directional, and they have a, a particular magnitude to them. So uh, maybe something like uh, this would be an example of a vector. 400 miles per hour um, at uh, 0, 070 degrees. Okay, so this is our direction, and this right here is our magnitude or our scalar component. So vectors um, are very specifically, okay, uh, have direction and a magnitude. Now, we can kind of think of this in all kinds of different ways. So let's uh, kind of draw a little x, y plane here. And the application of vectors are literally like infinite. Okay, let me uh, see if I can draw this a little better. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm kind of doing this a little bit on the fly because, you know, it's not a formal lesson on vectors, but I want to make a nice, neat little x, y plane here. Okay, but uh, instead of x, y, let's give this uh, like north, south, uh, east, and west. Okay, so let's say an airplane is going 200 uh, miles per hour at uh, 040 uh, degrees, or 045 degrees. So the way it works, north is zero degrees, east is what? Okay, uh, hopefully. When we do a compass, it's 90 degrees this way. Uh, south is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees, and then this would be 360 or zero degrees would be due north, all right? So this is the way it works with the compass. So if an airplane is going, let's say, uh, zero, four, five degrees, that would kind of be split the difference, at 200 knots, okay, maybe this would be an arrow. It's emanating right here. This is called, a, we call this a position vector, but we're going to represent this arrow like this, okay? Now, how about in... Uh, an airplane that's going, let's say, uh, um, 120 degrees, but it's going 400 knots. What would that vector look like? Well, it, you can see here, this is going 040. 120 degrees is over here. But if this is 200 knots, well, this vector is going to be double the length. Okay, so maybe something like this. Okay, so this would be this vector right here. All right, and this would be this vector right here. So the length of the vector is, in fact, its scalar component. Okay, so you see how that works? So here there's 200 degrees. It's smaller, all right? So the actual physical length of the arrow, okay, it represents the magnitude. And then wherever the uh, arrow is actually pointing is, in fact, its actual direction. Okay, so... These are vectors. Now, how do we represent vectors? There's all kinds of ways we can represent vectors. Uh, oftentimes, they'll look like this, like 3, 8. We use this little notation. There's um, I and J notation, but this is more advanced stuff. But just so you know, that's what a vector is. Okay, it represents, there's a direction and magnitude, right? And we kind of represent it like this uh, on this uh, north, south, east, west little uh, compass. Now, what good are vectors? Well, let's do a quick little problem here, okay? Now, let's say I have this little uh, boat, and let's say it's not so little, but let's say it's going 20 knots, okay, and it's going due east, all right? And let's say it's right here, and in, uh, in this uh, river, okay, as this boat's going down this river here, there is a cross current, okay, it's going this way, of 5 knots 
okay, and it's due north, okay? Now, let's just think about this. If I have a cross current going this way, and it's due north, and this boat is going due east this way, well, what's going to happen to the actual movement of the boat? Is it going to continue going like this? No, it's not, right? It's going to kind of drift off in this direction. It's going to end up going like this, correct? Because that current is uh, pushing it, right? So how do we know the actual direction it's going to end up and how fast? This is going to affect its speed as, as well, right? If I have this cross current, it's going to affect the speed. Well, this is a, a type of problem that we can use vectors to uh, solve. So let's go ahead and do this now by doing a little vector addition. Okay, now, so you remember, we can uh, represent vectors with uh, arrows, okay? So this is due east, and so this is, obviously, this is east, this is north, this is west, and this is south. So I'm going to draw a little arrow right here, uh, 20 knots due east. So I have what they call like an initial uh, starting point to that arrow, and I'm going to go out. 20 and I'll make my little arrow just like that. Okay, so this is 20 knots and the arrow is pointing in the right direction. It's pointing east. Now if this arrow's length represents 20, what do you think my arrow for my five knots is going to be? Well, it's going to be one fourth. Okay, let this be like 5, 10, 15, 20. So my five knots arrow is only going to be like this long. Okay, so and it's going to be going in what direction? It's going to be going north like this, all right? So this could be my five knots vector, all right? Again, uh, has a magnitude and direction. But I want to do something called vector addition. And this is where vectors uh, solve so many problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little arrow, and I'm going to take its starting point, that little starting point, and I'm going to... Uh, Put the, the end of one vector, this vector here, you're going to put the starting point of it right there, okay? This is what we call vector addition. So it's going to be just like this, all right? Of course, I'm sketching this out. It's not super precise. But here is my five knots vector, okay? And it's going due north, all right? So that's going north. This is my 20 knots vector. This is representing the boat. So how, you know, how is this going to help us out? Well, if we look here, okay? the beginning of this vector to the tip of that second vector, we have another vector. Okay, you see that vector right there I just drew in yellow? This is what we call the resultant vector. Resultant, resultant, hopefully I don't misspell that. That's the resultant vector, and what do you think that represents? Well, in fact, that represents the actual uh, direction that boat is gonna go with this cross current, all right? So this angle right here, We'd have to figure that out. How could we figure that out? Well, we'd have to use some basic trigonometry. Okay, but it's not that difficult to get that actual angle. And then uh, how fast is it going to be going? Well, we would have to uh, determine the length of that. Now, if this was an actual cross current, so uh, so this would be um, formed at a 90-degree angle. We, we could actually use uh, Pythagorean theorem here to get the length of this arrow. But the length of this arrow is going to be the um, actual uh, speed of this boat, okay? It's going to be the actual result to speed, you know, not the five, not the 20 knots. It's uh, We have this five-knot cross current. So if we look at it, we're like, okay, this is going to be what? Is it going to be longer or shorter? Well, it you can see this is a right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. So this boat is actually going to be going a little bit faster than 20 knots. But at what direction? Well, we need some uh, basic trigonometry to solve that. But these, uh, this is a good little basic example of vectors and problems. And that's why, you know, you do need to have a little bit, um, I don't want to say super advanced, but you got to have some working knowledge of trigonometry. Of course, there are or more sophisticated uh, vector problems called like the dot product and all this kind of stuff, but they are like so, 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 so important. I can't even overemphasize how important, how widely used vectors are, especially like in physics and motion problems, engineering, um, absolutely uh, everywhere. But I'm going to kind of uh, wrap it up at this point because this is the essence of vectors. If you were just remember, hey, a vector has a magnitude and direction, we can solve problems by using what we call vector addition, where we can have a resultant vector. Uh, this is this is a good start for you, okay? Now, if you continue to learn math, of course, I don't know what math level you're in, but you'll start learning stuff about vectors 
Oh, well, maybe like in Algebra 2, maybe in some geometry, but certainly like in a more advanced class like uh, pre-calculus. So if you are interested in learning vectors at a more advanced level, well, just in a couple more weeks, I will be launching my pre-calculus course. I get into vectors pretty heavy duty. But um, again, if you um, are ever planning on taking uh, science like uh, physics, physics is, uh, physics is like such an awesome uh, of course, I have a degree in mathematics, I have a master's degree, but I tell you, if I, if I didn't go into uh, mathematics, I would have went into physics because physics is, is awesome. It's just like an application of mathematics. So I would really encourage, if you like math, definitely take physics. And if you take physics, you're going to be doing vectors like crazy, okay? So widely, widely used stuff. But right now, okay, even if you don't do anything more in mathematics beyond this, at least you now know what a vector is. And if you really want to impress somebody, say, hey, listen, do you know what a vector is? They're going to say, I have no idea. You're going to tell them. They're going to be like, wow, wow, you are so smart. How did you get all that knowledge? We're like, I don't know. Watch this guy on YouTube. You know, he seems to, you know, a little bit about math. But anyways, listen, if you like this video, if this was somewhat kind of informative, well, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please uh, consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos uh, organized from basic to advanced math on various playlists on my channel. But uh, it's my goal, my mission to try to teach math, uh, really try to explain it in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have tons of stuff here for you. But my, my uh, best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.